Sometimes, because of our work schedules, the British Fist will be unable to provide you guys with a review of the show when it's on live. But here I am today to provide you with a TNA Impact Wrestling review. And we kick off the show with Buddy Ray and the rest of the Ace and Eights. He's questioning each one of why they lost last week, what happened, and why Devon has now left the Ace and Eights and left the company. And there's a reason why Garrett Bischoff, Wes Briscoe, and Knox don't get their own promo time or special moment in the Ace and Eights faction. It's because they've not got the strongest ability to cut a promo compared to Devon, Anderson or Bully Ray. But forget about their part, they tried and at least they did something now. But the main story comes from Anderson. Anderson starts to question Bully Ray's feelings towards them and his feeling towards Tito. And this stretches out throughout the night where eventually the other Ace Nates members start to agree with Anderson and we're starting to see the cracks in the Ace and Nates, which means sometime soon, probably in two pay-per-views time, which is probably going to be about half a year, the Ace Nates will be disbanding, breaking up, and we're going to see Anderson hopefully stay on his own direction. Wes and Garrett doing their own thing. Knox doing his own thing. Unless we get more releases soon. But for an opener, just like the rest of the show, it was a mixed bag. Even though Kazarian is being lined up with Christopher Daniels and now Bobby Roode, I still feel that he's the leftover guy. Like the main guys to watch out for in this small faction is Christopher Daniels and Bobby Roode. I would love to see Kazarian leave and branch off on his own, believing he can do it, believing he can make it, believing he is not a third wheel, second wheel. He's an individual wrestler. Even though I do really enjoy his promo and his teamwork with Christopher Daniels and Bobby Roode. But in this match, because he's in the Bound for Glory series, we do get to see matches of him going against Jeff Hardy. But the match to me was just an okay match. Nothing too special and no real highlight on Kazarian, which I'm hoping to see somewhere down the line. Even though in the past few weeks, month, TNA have provided the knockout with interest and segments, match types. I still believe they need to sign more knockouts they're actually going to keep. Taylor Hendrix! And because even though you're trying to provide us stuff, if we've seen the match before, we've seen continuation of matches with the knockouts. With going to get bored of it, we're going to want to see something different, we're going to want to see the knockout division grow, so I'm hoping to see more get signed, but for the knockouts match, we have a number one contendership between ODB and Gail Kim, we get the result of ODB becoming the new number one contender, so there we have Mickey James versus ODB for the pay-per-view. I'm, I'm thinking. But backstage, we have Velvet Sky I'm quite interested in. Yes, we see a lot of Velvet Sky before this disappearing injury act. But she starts talking about Chris Sabin. And I'm just wondering where he is. Since he lost his world title to Buddy Ray, he's had a little disappearing act. So instead of having him on the show, we have Velvet Sky bring up the relationship. And maybe TNA are going to bring it into the show to give Chris Sabin something to do now he's no longer champion. 
and Velvet Sky something to do now she's not the contender for the uh, knockout championship. The first thing we get from the main event mafia promo is Rampage talking directly to Tito. Because the reason these two were brought into TNA, yes, part of it was to help out TNA and the Ace and Eight storyline, but it's to build up their match in November. So to have work promo, a few face off in the ring. Is going to build that up, build the interest. So I'm glad they had their little moment in this promo. But then it turns around to the main event Mafia members, minus Kurt Angle, talking about AJ Styles and welcoming him to their faction. Because last week AJ decided to come out and help the main event Mafia. AJ comes out and he just wants the ring on his own. He wants to be the centre of attention to cut this promo. And the good thing about this is I like it when TNA or wrestling promotions bring some personal issues into this. Because we have the go-to guy, AJ Styles, talking as Alex Jones or his proper self. He talks about how TNA have always seen him as the number one guy, the one to rely on to bring the best matches possible, the spotlight guy, and that rightfully so. You could say that AJ Styles is Mr. TNA, the guy that represents the company. Yes, they've got all your other favourites, but AJ Styles seems to be the one to grab the attention. But his promo. He starts talking about the negativity of TNA. He starts talking about his family. And how he wants to spend more time with them. Could this be building up the departure of AJ Styles? Or because of the personal story behind this. Could this be AJ Styles wanting to get back into the Bound for Glory series table and become the next possible winner? I don't know. I will admit I liked his promo, but why are they doing this? Why are they giving AJ his own time to cut this promo? But this moves swiftly on to his match against Bobby Roode. And this match... I liked it, I enjoyed it, I thought this was great, enjoyable and a match I wouldn't mind seeing continue on. But AJ Styles, after a good match, defeats Bobby Roode to get his points into the Bound for Glory series and AJ Styles didn't quite make it. Another guy who's very serious about winning the Bound for Glory series is none other than A.A. Austin Aries. And he goes in to have a match against Christopher Daniels. They have a comedy segment backstage before the match. The match itself, brilliant, enjoyable, which you expect because Christopher Daniels has had a big, strong, enjoyable feud against AJ Styles. So to put Christopher Daniels up against AJ Styles means that there's something strong about Christopher Daniels. Austin Aries, fan favourite, very enjoyable in the ring. To combine these two, you expect a good match. And that's what we got. This could have gone either way. But with Austin Aries, I guess, to prove that he works on his own, he trusts himself and no one else. They were going to give him the win, and that's what they did. I enjoy this match, and guys, if you've not seen TNA yet, or if you agree, just leave your comments about the great performance from both wrestlers in the comment section below. Guys, I have great news. Hulk Hogan has returned! I'm one of the fans that wasn't hyped, pumped, enjoying the fact that he was returning. Because without Hulk Hogan, the attention had been on the rest of the show, 
the rest of the wrestlers, giving us something different. But he comes in straight in with the big news that there's going to be a gauntlet match for 20 points. And in my opinion, this is just so a lower Banff Glory Series wrestler can make it into the top four. AJ Styles being my pick. Because even though AJ Styles had that loner gimmick going on, with the fact they could possibly lose him, their top dog in the company, maybe TNA are going to use this opportunity to put him back in the top seat of the company. We'll have to see, but expect some good feuds to come from AJ Styles if he stays around. The next big news he brings up is that somehow he's managed to get Brooke Hogan, not her, uh, the Brooke that Buddy Ray's with now, but his daughter, to have a divorce with Bully. And, you know, this was just stupid because we had Bully Ray promising he is not going to give Brooke his divorce, only for Hogan to somehow find his own magical way to make it happen. But the fact it's done and Buddy did not care, he didn't want her back, he still loves her though, but that's ditched Brooke, that's ditched that storyline, moving on. Buddy Ray will have to defend his world title against an Ace Nate member, I think it was in two weeks time. So let's cancel it down. Bully Ray versus Garrett. Bully versus Wes. Well, Wes was going against Kurt Angle, but um, Bully Ray versus Knox. Knox has done nothing since he's joined, so I really don't think it's going to be him. So that leaves Bully Ray versus Mister. Anderson. Anderson. That match would be great. You've got Anderson in the main event kind of picture. Going against the world champion. Bully Ray. Putting him over. Maybe not in a win wise. But wrestling wise. And it helps the break up of the ace and eights. So I can forgive Hogan from, for coming back. Because by the news he's made. He's done two good things. Helping the 8 and 8 break up. And ended the Brooke, Hogan and Buddy Ray storyline. So it's a bit of a mixed bag like I said at the beginning. But please share your thoughts. Because it's your thoughts that makes this review. The British Fist happy to hear what you have to say. Please let me know. Until next time YouTubers. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week. And good.